Good evening to all of you who may be watching The Unknown Prophet. I am coming tonight to give you a word from God that I received yesterday. Well, the yesterday, no, on the 15th. It's a little different. He has put me in a little different situation this time. As I sat to talk with him, he simply said, watch. And when he does that, I watch. I had a vision and as I watched, I saw a full view of the world, but there were spots appearing in various countries, including this one. But it didn't appear that it was the fire of God that I had been seeing before. Then the world faded from the vision. I asked the father if the vision was what he wanted me to see tonight. And he said, yes, it is. He said, this is a different night. He said, those spots that you saw represent my people that are trying to hear my voice. And I am speaking to them, but they're struggling to hear. You need to spend a little time with them, son, to help them. It hurts me when they are trying to hear me and can't. At least they can't recognize my voice for I am talking to each one. Even as they seek me, I'm talking to each one. Teach them from what you know, son, for you have learned well, and now I put it in your hands. So I'm coming to you tonight more of a teacher than a prophet. And I will let you decide how I stack up on that. <coughs> Pardon me. My unknown prophet cup. <clears throat> when I started out, number one, learning to hear God's voice or trying to hear God's voice, I found a book by Mark Verkler, V I R K L E R, titled How to Hear God's Voice. And I decided that that would probably be a very good place to start trying to hear God's voice. So I bought the book and that was my diving platform for diving into learning how to hear God. I pulled him up on safari and found out that he now has a number of books and DVDs on the subject. And if any of you feel like that you would gain more by having a book in front of you and going through it and following instructions written out in a book, I would suggest that you go to Mark, M-A-R-K, Verkler, V-I-R-K-L-E-R, -E and check out his books and possibly get one that may help you. Number two, the thing that I want to make clear again is that I seldom, if ever, hear the audible voice of God. Twice in my life, what I heard could easily have been the audible voice, but I couldn't be totally sure. I've referenced them in my book. If you haven't read the book, one of the times was when I was in a situation in my employment where I was running a department and the chief engineer went to another company and the head of surveying was appointed to take over his position. Surveying and engineering work from totally different aspects as far as time and the way to manage things is concerned. And so he called me in and told me, he said, I want you to step down as head of the department. I want you to continue to work as you're working, but I want to control the department. I told him at that time, 
that I would be glad to check it out. I was getting ready to go on vacation. I said, when I get back to you, I'll let you know what I come up with. Somewhere in that same time frame, I heard the voice of God. Again, this was, I don't know if it was audible in the spirit, but it was so loud that I basically stopped and I said, excuse me. And I looked behind me to see who it was. And there was no one there. But God spoke to me again the same thing. And what he had said was, he said, I have this under control. I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I don't have the book in front of me to go back and get the exact words. But basically he said, I have it under control. It's in my hands. And from that I got total peace. Now, that was one of the times. There's another time I heard the voice very, very strongly. Again, I don't know that it was audible or not. Nonetheless, that is something that you need to bear in mind. Don't look for an audible voice. I, I once had someone tell me, if God speaks to you audibly, you're in trouble. I don't, I don't know that that's true because God can speak any way he wants to. But look for that still small voice that speaks to your spirit and to your mind. When you are striving to get to know God and to hear his voice, don't, don't go asking him a lot of questions that you want answered. Stay away from the questions for the time being and form a relationship with him first. Save the questions for later. Start out by telling him you love him, telling him that you just want to talk with him. Praise him, praise his name. And then be quiet and listen. Worship and praise before you start is always a good idea, and it will set the stage for a close relationship. But come to him just seeking to get to know him rather than ask a bunch of questions to start with. I also think that when you start trying to hear God, let me run down the page here just a minute. That you want to be extremely, what do I want to say? You want to listen very closely to the pronouns that are coming into that still small voice. Many times we hear him and we think it's ourselves. We think it's us speaking to our own mind thinking our own thoughts. But if you listen closely to the thoughts that you're getting, if it's you speaking to you, it's going to be I this and I that in the first person. Now, first person, second person, third person, let me stop. Back, back when I was growing up, they actually taught it. When they were teaching reading, writing, and arithmetic, they taught English. And the first person is the person speaking. The second person is the person they're speaking to. And the third person is the person speaking to them. So when I say the first person, if your thoughts are coming back in, and you say, Lord, I want to talk with you, and, and your, your mind says, yes, I want to talk to you too, that, that's you speaking to yourself, because that's the first person speaking. I, I, me. What you will hear from God will be the third person. God speaking to you will say, you need to do so and so. You need to accomplish so and so. And then he might say, I, the Lord God, am speaking this to you. But it's him, the third person, speaking directly to you, the first person. So look at your pronouns. My teacher would be very happy with me to learn that I learned something in that class. 
<laughs> Look at your pronouns and listen to them carefully. They will indicate to you whether it's you yourself speaking back to yourself or whether it is the Father speaking to you in a third person. Okay. Item number five, relax. Don't try to force it. Don't try to stress and strain. Relax, clear your mind. Just get rid of all the daily garbage and clear your mind and sit back in quietness. That is necessary many times to hear that small voice until you actually learn to hear it. Once you learn to hear it, you can allow God and God will speak to you in the marketplace, even as I told you, he spoke to me that time when I had that decision to make. Even as he spoke to me another time when I was driving down the street and at an intersection and he said, take a left and go see so-and-so. If I did not know and had not learned to hear his voice, I would never have perceived that. So relax, and I know it'll be hard for some of you today, but that's a key factor. Relax your mind and try to just clear it and then listen. Number six, don't give up. I guarantee that given half a chance, Satan and the demonic will try their best to turn you away from hearing God speak to you and being able to speak to him in a conversation mode. There, that is, for Satan, a major failure because now God really has direct communion with you and can control at least giving you the thoughts that he wants you to do and wants you to follow. And know that once you hear his voice and learn to hear his voice, you still got to be constantly on your guard because Satan will inevitably slip something in on you and cause you to think you're hearing from God. I still fight that battle. If I hear something that just doesn't feel right or doesn't sound right, I'll immediately stop. God, God doesn't mind you doing that. I'll immediately stop and bind the enemy by the power and authority of Jesus Christ, just as though I was doing deliverance. I silence him. I speak to my own mind and I silence my own thoughts and I declare a mind you will not speak into my thoughts at this time. You will not put thoughts into my mind. I silence you to hear the Lord's voice. And then I'll go back to the Lord and I'll say, Father, was that you speaking? And more times than not, I will get an answer that is no. That was not me. And then he will give me what he wants me to hear rather than what Satan was trying to put into my mind. Many of you will say, well, if you're talking with God, how can they override God? I, I don't have an answer for that. He doesn't override God. I think God draws back and allows us to make the decision to strengthen us and to strengthen our walk with him and to strengthen our ability to know when we hear him and when we don't. So anyway, don't be surprised if that happens and you ask God if that was him and he says no. I find that very refreshing. That I think pretty much wraps up what I have in the way of teaching. Again, if you feel like you need to get a book and get it in front of you, check out Verkley, and I'm sure there are others around, but him I'm familiar with. I learned under him, and if I learned, anybody can. Now, I'm going to switch topics for just a minute. It 
in a blog of the 7th, the blog that I put on on the 7th, I believe that I mentioned Biden and his party. I try to stay away from direct politics, but when a father gives me a word, I don't try to make it politically correct. I will not change what he says, and when he tells me to post it, I will. I am truly sorry that if it upset anyone, and I can understand how it would, but I will do what the Father says do, and I will say what the Father says say. I can only apologize if I hurt you. And if I didn't know I was hearing God's voice in all of this, I would quit. I love you all, and again, if I upset some of you, I am extremely sorry. But as he speaks to me, I speak to you. I, the unknown prophet, Fred Watkins, have spoken this, not the Father. <laughs> that is what I have for today. I hope the teaching will help some. And I know that God is really wanting his people to hear his voice. And when he speaks and you fail to hear it, it makes him sad. It actually, I think, hurts him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have told me to do what I have done today. God bless you. The Unknown Prophet, Fred Watkins, signing off.